Hey, hey, I'm Shay Warner, and you are listening to Casual Cattle Conversations. If you are ready to explore different management practices and focus on improving your operation and the beef industry, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited you are listening. Hey, folks, this is a fun interview on a topic that I have yet to cover on the show. So we are visiting with Skylar Moore today, and he's with Joplin Regional Stockyards. And so we really visit about his role in the beef industry, the role of the stockyards in the beef industry, and how that's kind of changed over time. We talk about some of the challenges that this sector of the industry faces, and most of our conversation is actually kind of focused around what producers are doing and how they can work with their local auction barn to add value to their calves, get connected with buyers, understand what those feedlots are looking for. So this is a great conversation. It was fun and refreshing for me to listen to just because, like I said, it's something different for the show. Now, before we dive into that, I do want to remind you that if you are a cattle producer who is eager to learn, wants to improve your operation, is focused on profitability, um, but is tired of a uh, another boring Zoom webinar, I'd encourage you to check out Rancher Minds. So Rancher Minds is the program that I've been hosting for, I want to say about three years now, but it consists of monthly Q&A calls between your peer ranchers and industry experts. So this is a small group of about 13 producers right now. Like I said, we meet once a month and we talk about things like adding alternative revenue streams, cattle marketing, value added programs, um, supply chain collaborations, hiring help, business management, strategic planning, transition planning, estate planning. The members really vote on these topics. So it's whatever's important to you. That's what we talk about. And they're simple to join. They're fun. We learn together. We laugh together. We pray together. It's really a great opportunity for ranchers to come together and continue learning in a fun way that works for them. So if you're interested in learning more about that program, head down to the link in my show notes and that'll take you to my website, or you can simply use the contact us feature on my website and that'll send me an email. With that, let's visit with Skylar. Well, Skylar, I appreciate you taking time to be on my show today and visit about a sector of the industry that I have not yet represented on the show completely, maybe in a few side or a f- side paths. And I've talked about it a little bit through my Rancher Mind program, but not directly on the podcast. So to give listeners a little bit of a background on who you are and what you do, can you talk a little bit about your role in the industry today? Uh, sure, Shay. Um, just to tell you a little bit about what we do. So uh, the Joplin Stockyards is uh, it's a family business. Um, my dad got started in it in 1985. Um, today, I run it with my brother and uh, my brother-in-law and my dad still involved. So um, in 85, we we're actually in downtown, old downtown Joplin. Uh, so it, it started operating in 1930. It was right on a railroad track, a lot of cattle shipped in and out by railway. Um, in 1995, we actually moved to a new facility out. Uh, we're probably east of Joplin, about seven or eight miles, right off I-44. Um, it's, I believe it's about nine or 10 acres under roof and capacity for outside traps to hold about 5,000 additional head. Uh, we're actually the only CAFO stockyards, I believe, in our area, maybe in the United States. So we have a lagoon system, we have a, a pivot, and, and uh, you know we can put as many cattle in here as we want. So that's one thing that's a little bit different about us. Um, last year we sold right at 540,000 head. So we're the we just considered the largest in the United States. It looks like we're on track this year to probably sell about the same. Uh, we sell, uh, we have a video sale, which is called Primetime Livestock. We market about 150,000 head on it annually. And, uh, you know, it's it's something that we offer to our producers too. So, um, yeah, we're just, uh, we're a family business and and, you know, just go at it every day. Well, I, I always like a good family business story, especially in the cattle industry. Um, so 1985, 
is when you said your family got involved, correct? Right. Well, my dad actually went to work at the uh, old downtown stockyards in 1977. Okay. And at that time, it was five commission companies. And he worked his way up. And then that's when we bought the last, he bought the last commission company out in uh, 1985. So we took full ownership. Can you talk a little bit about how the role of the sale barn has changed since, you know, 1985 up until today? Um, you know, as far as the role of the stockyards is, and, and, you know, our role not only is working with our producers, we work with both ends. So we're working with producers, we're working with buyers. Uh, this is something every day, you know, that we, uh, that we do. So honestly, as far as the role in the stockyards, obviously in 1985 and coming up even to 10 or 15 years ago, uh, so we're always talking to these buyers, we're talking to producers, and, you know, we've implanted a lot of programs over the years. We've always tried to bend kind of on the forefront uh, how our producers can make more money, you know, whether they should wean their kids, what shots they can give. Um, you know, we got a lot of these vaccination companies that we work with. So, you know, as and I, I feel like, I mean, in 1985, I was born that year, but just the stories I hear, the way things went, um, you know, everybody just brought a lot of bulls, heifers, not weaned. There was just not a lot of stories being told about the cattle, anything to add value, really. I mean, there was people doing it, but not nothing like today. So, you know, over the years, I feel like that uh, that not only we play the role of, of marketing the cattle for people, but also that we, we try to help them with their genetics, their vaccinations, uh, different things like that, how long they should wean the kids. So just try to really get the producer and the buyer connected. So they're selling cattle the buyer wants to buy, and the buyer is happy on the other end on his purchases he make. So, you know, that's one thing that we, I think it's really changed over the years. Uh, you know, especially here, we get a lot of cattle out of Arkansas and, and Oklahoma, and, and even today we get them out of Mississippi, Kentucky, uh, Virginia, Georgia, Florida. We really sell cattle worldwide. And I think that you've seen that the way people take care of their cattle, the genetics, the things are the shots they're given has got, I mean, it's all kinds of improvement the last, well, 38 years. That's how old I am. So that was 1985. But I think you, you've seen a lot of change in that. So can you talk a little bit about some of those value added routes, opportunities, programs that some of your producers are seeing success in liking just talk a little bit more about that space because that's always a topic that listeners seem to be interested in and I think it's really a it there's been a push for it for a while and it continues to be of more and more importance as we continue on in the industry so touch a little bit more on some of those value-added options sure so um you know if you look back maybe 12 15 years ago October used to be our biggest month all these spring calves would come to town. They wouldn't wean them. We'd have 10,000 head of them. You know, they always brought less than the market. But as we got over time, there's less and less people that want to buy high-risk calves. I mean, it's just there's fewer and fewer of them all the time. Um, one thing that we do is we background a lot of cattle ourselves, you know, and, and there's nothing worse than having to sit here and support your market on a rainy day in October and have to take all the calves on because more than likely a lot of them is going to, not make it. So, you know, over the years, we've tried to kind of trained our, our producers. October now is probably our slowest month, and we get them to wean them calves. We have a value-added sale in December. Uh, first week of December, we have a value-added sale in June for a lot of them fall calves. Where these guys, they go ahead and wean them calves. They, uh, you know, they give them their shots and, and, and then bring them to town. And, you know, so much of it today is you know, these feed yards, they can't get the help that they used to. They don't, they don't have a, a stack of applications. These guys want the right pens um, to treat these sick cattle, you know, so they, and so many corporates are in the market all the time. And most corporates, you know, they want them cattle wean, weaned at least 60 days. So, you know, we have all the corporate buyers, uh, you know, buy rivers, cactus, um, you know, we've got all them guys in our barn every week and, and they want to go buy some cattle here, but they want to wean, you know, at least 60 days. So, you know, you just see more and more value added to it that way. Um, 
And then, of course, there's less people to, to take home these ball and calves. And, you know, none of us guys that start these ball and calves are getting, you know, most of them are kind of retiring or getting out of it. And uh, there's just not a lot of young guys in the market now that wants to buy a load of high-risk calves and mess with them. They're a lot of work, and, you know, it's, it's hard to make any money with them. So I think that's one thing that's really helped over the years that, that you know, people started paying attention more to that. These guys, these producers have. Uh, we're able, if they don't, you know, they will go ahead and give them two rounds of shots, which makes it a lot easier on the backside. So um, it's been a, a really, really big role, and and, and a lot of people, a lot of these producers have taken advantage of it. Are there genetic programs too that you see producers turning to, or is there like more emphasis on genetics too when you look at adding value to calves? Uh, yeah, so, you know, right here, there's a lot of, there's still a lot of company across cattle in our country. I mean, you know, some limousine cows, or, you know, they're Charlay, uh, you know, but it, if a guy calls me and he wants to buy a load of cattle and he's from, uh, you know, Wichita, Kansas and North, you know, he wants them to be 70, 80 percent black. So we're selling more and more Angus cattle. You know, Angus breed did a, a really good job of uh, pushing their product. So, you know, you've seen some of these guys. We've got two or three real good local uh, Angus breeders that sell bulls around here, and they're pushing them. And I, I've seen a big difference in it. You know, used to be 10 years ago, guys said, well, I need a bull. We'll just buy me one tomorrow, you know. And someone bring a bull in, I'd buy it for them soon. And I don't know. They but these guys are spending more money on on bulls, and they're, you know, they're keeping heifers. They're upgrading their herd. And so, yeah, that's something that's been real significant here the last, I'd say, the last seven or eight years. Okay. So you mentioned earlier, you said you do video sales as well. Can you talk a little bit about why you chose to offer that service to your customers and kind of add that route into what you were already doing? Uh, so back in 2000, it was around 2000, right around there anyway. So that corn got really high. The cow calf market got really tough. You know, these kids are bringing less than a dollar, uh, and a lot of our customers had a little bit of extra grass. So what we did is we went to a local bank and after we got going, we would buy a guy a load of calves and we would put them cattle on the video the same day. And we actually got this bank to put up hundred percent of the money as long as they went ahead and contracted those cattle. So really when we got the video, going, that's kind of how we started. If a guy had 78 acres of grass, we would, buy 60, 600 pound steers. They cost a dollar a pound. We'd sell them on the video out front. Weighing 900, they bring a dollar a pound. And, uh, you know, he could advance some cattle $300 and, and he had the grass to do it. Most of this went on in the spring and the summer. So that's really what got that going. And, and now here locally, you know, we have guys that background, a lot of big backgrounders in this area that started with that program that are still doing it today. So, you know, they buy these calves and they turn them out and then we put them on the video form. So it's just kind of grew and grew and grew. Um, I mean, obviously we sell cattle out in Kansas, Oklahoma, New Mexico. You know, my mother-in-law lives in Okeechobee, Florida. We put her calves on there. So it's expanded a lot over the years, but that, that was the main reason that we started it, just to try to generate some revenue for our producers. RanchChannel.com, bull sales, western events, product information, and more right at your fingertips on the ultimate cowboy-friendly platform. Want to follow up-to-date markets? Head to RanchChannel.com. No need to dig for information on all these different websites. It's all right there on RanchChannel.com. So I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about, you know, maybe some of the challenges you face with your sector of the beef industry. So would you be willing to talk about a few of the main challenges that face as a stockyard owner yeah um you know the challenges over the years is uh you know probably you know the biggest thing for us is we've really had to expand our our area and do some things different just because the cow herd is shrinking a little bit um you know but Really, up until now, I feel like it's been, we haven't, we've really had it pretty good. You know, there's some things in the pipeline that can make our job a lot harder. Uh, you know, tagging some of these calves, doing that, I, you know, that, that's that got us a little bit worried just because, you know, out of those 
probably 75% of the kids we sell are the guys that have 40 cows or less in this area. You know, a guy, most of these people around here, they, you know, they got 80 acres, they work for the state, they're a teacher, they got a little cow herd, you know, they bring them calves and they don't have any facilities, you know, they, they hire a guy to come help them catch them, they haul them in here and sell them. So um, just going forward, you know, like the, you know, we're, we're really watching government mandated tagging of these calves just because we have, you know, we got 12,000 producers. And uh, if you put, the, if you implemented that today, there'd be someone all them calves in here a year from now I wouldn't have any idea that there was any such thing out there. So, you know, I think that's something that we're really watching and paying attention to. Um, and, you know, other than that, we're big supporters of our market. So, uh, you know, that's, that's another thing that's been a challenge when we get an overabundance of these high risk calves certain times of the year, just finding outlets to go, to go with them. You know, we, we try to sit in there and make sure that, uh, everybody gets the market for them and you know we handle 40 50 thousand cattle ourselves but uh you know that can be a, get to be a little bit of a problem uh, sometimes but you know one thing that's great about the the auction business it's not like any other business you know we we're price discovery it's you bring these cattle to us you know you got people in here actively bidding on them and and it just it's a true market there's you know there's really not any other business like that you know it you can look at the fat cattle, you know, we just, we're going to take what they bid us this week. We really don't have much choice, but in the, in the cell barn business, you know, we're, we take a lot of pride in getting the most or at least getting the market for all these cattle. So, um, you know, that's one thing's great about this business and, and I hope there's really nothing ever changed that because that's what makes it so great. So you said, you know, and rough estimate, you know, and, approximately like 70 percent of the calves you sell probably come from smaller herds 40 50 head or less i guess yes yeah well and the average herd size in the united states is around that size unless it's been updated and i'm off there so i guess yeah, that's, that's right yeah so my question is how are you working with that set of producers just because they are a large amount of people you're working with even though they aren't bringing like the volume of cattle. So, you know, like we've implemented a co program here and we had it, I'm not sure when we started it, but for guys that have 20 head or less, they'll haul them in here on Sundays. We actually got a computer system that sorts those calves and steer heifer bulls, weight, they get put into larger lots of cattle and then with, they get sold on Monday. So, you know, the thought behind that is Cattle bring more and bigger numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like if you go out and buy uh, any other commodity, really. If you're going to buy a hundred loads of corn, you're probably going to get it cheaper than if you bought one load. Cattle, the more there are, usually the more they bring. So that was our thought in that. So you know, we'll have from three to nine hundred head in that commingle. We might have five hundred head in the commingle that belong to two hundred different producers. Um, we talked to our buyers. They said, well, you know, it'd be nice if they had some kind of shop. So we actually give them a modified live nasogen. They come in on Sunday night. Um, we run the drive in. The computer runs them down a long alley, sorts them into load lots. And it don't matter if we have uh, 4,000 head or if we got 14,000, we sell those calves at 11 o'clock every Monday. So that's kind of the prime time of our sale. Um, 10, 10 to noon, but we try to shoot for 11 o'clock. So it gives all these small producers a chance of catching the prime time market, getting be able to get sold in a bigger group. And, you know, if a guy hauls two calves in here on a Monday and we got 16,000 head, well, he might have to sell late that night, take a lot of shrink, different things like that, instead of bringing them in Sunday, we put them in the commingle groups, they get put on hay and water, we bring them right out of them pens into into the stacking alleys and then they get sold at a really good time. So that's been one of the ways that we've worked with the, the really small producers. Do you see any of those small producers trying to do some of that collaborating and commingling on their own, whether it's with neighbors trying to, you know, um, raise similar genetics, health program, et cetera, or is it mostly something that 
it's just on an individual basis and they rely on you guys to help them with that commingling process to create a load? Um, not so much in this area. You know, we buy cattle from other parts of the country where, you know, a couple of neighbors you get together and sell load. And there is a little bit of that done on the video and different things, but um, as far as around here, you know, you really don't see too much of that yet. So now those calves are still considered high risk, not once they're commingled like that, just because they come from so many different backgrounds. Yeah. So most of them calves that are put in their commingled, they're not weaned. They haven't been shot. So yeah, it's, they're, they're still considered high risk, but they still will bring more if there's more of them. Um, we actually used to do a program with MFA on our specials where we would commingle all those calves together and sell loads of wean cattle with two rounds of shots, which it worked good, but over the years as the numbers went down, we really couldn't justify doing that. So we just let each individual sell their cattle. But, um, yeah, they can still be high risk. There's no doubt about that. But it's better. I mean, it's not as good as bringing in one producer showing up with volume of uniform calves, but it's better than selling right. well, 10 here, guy, five there. If a guy's got 40 cows and he runs the bull year around, he brings in 10 calves. They weigh from two to 800 pounds. There's, he cut one of them, but he didn't cut the other one. There's steers, heifers, and bulls. And it, you sell those 10 calves in six drafts because you don't have one animal that's the same. Well, when you do that, instead of selling them 10 calves with 500 other calves in 30 minutes at 11 o'clock, those 10 calves, it takes 10 minutes to sell those 10 calves. And while you're selling those or somebody else's, calves outside or weaned or whatever that are sitting there shrinking so it takes time off to sell too so not only does it benefit the little guy it benefits the big guy too because it does speed or sell up you know it might cut if you had to sell those 500 calves along with 200 producers without combing they might be split up into a hundred different lots that you have to sell during that sale well you know, so much of this is about shrink for the producers. So it, it cuts a lot of time off the sale and speeds things up too. Yeah, absolutely. So you guys do specialty sales as well, correct? Yes, ma'am. Can you talk a little bit about um, why you do some of those specialty sales and why some of your customers like that? Uh, so like I said, we have a, a woman back in December um, and we have one in January. And then we have one uh, in June, but we have our own brand of tags. So, you know, if a guy wants to wean them 45 days, we have a 45 day wean tag. We have a 60 day wean tag. Um, they fill out paperwork. They verify it all through our system. And, uh, you know, then buyers can come in here and buy them with confidence. So that's, you know, that's the main reason. You'll see uh, some of those cattle at them special sales bring 5 to $10 more. Um, just because them guys know that they these people's put in the work. So these guys that's doing all the work and they can put a tag in and cost a dollar and you know get fifty, sixty dollars more ahead, then it's it's a real big benefit to them. And we, we've had several guys start participating in that. Even if they don't put them in and bring them to a special, if they want to market them at another time, they'll still go home ahead and wean them, do the work and put our tag in them. Because, you know, our buyer base is usually about the same every week. They can look and see that those calves have our tag and then the buyers know that they've done the work. And so they can get a little bit of a premium on a regular sale, like on a Monday. Are you seeing success with like other tagging programs? Like I, I'm a Red Angus person. So I think of FCCP, Allied Access. I know there's premium Red Baldy tags. I know other breeds have their tags as well. So are you seeing demand and success with some of those programs as well? No, oh, absolutely. Um, you know, any any kind of program that if, if I'm auctioneering the sale, you know, John an auctioneer, my brother's an auctioneer, my dad's an auctioneer, but anything that we can tell these buyers a little bit more about these cattle and, and have a visual tag in them. And, you know, the more you can talk about the cattle, you know, the more value it's going to add. So you know, any of those kind of programs, uh, you know, they create a lot of value. And, um, you know, the tags you're talking about are known, you know, really nationwide. So, you know, if, if a guy you're selling to out in Kansas or Nebraska or wherever you're going to send them, 
you know, you can tell him, you know, these are red Angus certified or Angus certified or right on this program, then they're more apt to buy them too. So yeah, I think it's a great deal. So you've touched on this a little bit um, throughout our conversation, but I just want to ask the question directly. When you are thinking about some of those repeat customers who you really view as successful and try to set themselves up for success each and every year when they come in, what are some of the things they are doing to be successful, to have a good sale day, even with markets, which can be volatile? Uh, So, you know, it's, it's, this business is all about reputation. Uh, Really, that's all you got in this business. So, you know, if a guy gets to doing, you know, he gets good bulls and he gives the right vaccines and he weans them and and the buyer buys them and, and he loves the cattle do really good, they're healthy. Well, when they bring them in the next year, you know, that buyer's going to try to buy them again. Um, you know, and that's, that's the, we've got guys that we've sold cattle for, for 30, 40 years, you know, and they got good reputation. So, you know, we, we just really try to push that to the producers. Um, that, that'd probably be more the main thing more than anything. Um, you know, just every year, you know, do the best job that you can. It's, you know, I've had a lot of calls yesterday. Of course, the markets went down thirty dollars a hundred, and I've got people calling me all day. What do we do? Is it, is it going? Where's it going? This and that and everything else. And I always just tell them, just do what you do. You know, if you wing your calves October first, you sell them the first week of December in our special. You're never going to outguess the market. You just got to have a plan. You got to stick to it, right or wrong. Um, and, you know, that's just something we try to push to our guys. And a lot of them do that. They'll wean their calves October 1st. They'll sell them January 1st. Or they'll wean them May 1st. And they'll sell them June 15th. Uh, you know, and just they got a good program and it works. So it's that's what I try to push to them. Just get you a plan, stick to it. And, you know, don't, don't let all these outside markets influence you too much. All right. Well, as we kind of wrap up today and move towards the end of our conversation do you have any final thoughts or anything you'd like to share with cattle producers who are out there listening um you know really it's uh i don't have too much you know one one thing about it i just you know i suggest that you keep supporting the cell barn as much as you can or video cell i think it's uh it's a great way from getting everything too vertically integrated in this business um you know that there's it, it's price discovery is the biggest thing about an auction barn and you know like our barn here this year we're going to sell one billion dollars worth of cattle at Joplin, Missouri. So we have such a big big impact on the economy and and things going around and and uh, you know I I just I like the auction business. I think it's a good way to market your cattle and just keep doing the best you can if you can support one of them barns or. or put them somewhere where we can let people bid on them. I think it's a great deal. All right. Well, Skylar, thank you for your time today and sharing your story and knowledge with my listeners. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And that's a wrap on that one, folks. Now, remember, if you like this episode, give me a shout out on social media, text it to a friend, send me a screenshot of that, and I'll enter you in a giveaway for a gift card to your favorite local farm store. With that, Have happy ranching, folks.